Now for our first speaker, it's uh, Dr. Marcia Sirota, a psychiatrist, published author, personal coach, and professional speaker with over 20 years of clinical experience and is an expert in communication, relationships, and unlocking the creative potential within everyone. Marcia helps people become more resilient in the face of obstacles, and tonight she'll be speaking to us about how to balance back, excuse me, how to bounce back to your best life. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Marcia Sirota. All right. How's this? Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay, you can see me, but I can't see you. Um, before I start, you see I have papers in my hands. I just had the weekend from hell. I have an almost 14-year-old Yorkshire Terrier. Anyone who has pets in the audience? Yes. Okay, so my Yorkshire Terrier developed a corneal ulcer and I was on a um, five time a day, four different medications spread out five times a day for the weekend and I was not able to memorize my talk because I was stressed out about today when I brought him back to the vet and he was given a clean bill of health, so yay. But, um, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about something very interesting because it very much pertains to what happened to me over the weekend, including the fact that when you're under stress, your brain is a sieve. So uh, bear with me. Okay, so this is the official serious girl look. <laughs> All right, so uh, again, hi everyone. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be talking to you about how to bounce back to your best life, otherwise known as how to become more resilient. And uh, I really like talking about resilience because uh, what I've discovered over time is that no matter who you are, at some point in your life, bad things are going to happen, including some, some of you right in this very moment. And that's why it's so important when these bad things are happening that you figure out how to deal with them in a really good way, otherwise the bad things might drag you under. I also really like talking about resilience because I have a lot of experience with, with it, both in teaching people how to be more um, thriving versus struggling in the face of adversity, and also in learning how to deal with my own adversity over the years. All right. Where are we? Oh, yeah. So, some of the things that have been happening to me to test my own ability to, to cope and have resilience are, I lost a, a wonderful cousin of mine this past August. She had a four-year battle with cancer and uh, it was really excruciating. And then after I lost my cousin, a whole bunch of other things built up, including I lost my cat in February. He had heart disease and suddenly from one night to the next morning, that was it. So this talk is really partly for myself as much as it is for you because we all really need to learn about resilience. And the thing that I've discovered is my experience isn't really that different from anyone else because when I talk to a lot of people, everyone has their own stories of heart, heartbreak, hardship, pain, disappointment, loss. You know, no one gets through life unscathed. And what I've noticed is that the difference between being crushed by adversity and being able to bounce back has very little to do with how bad your problems are or even with how many problems have piled up all at once. It's all about your attitudes and the strategies that you employ, and that's what makes the difference between being drawn under and being able to rise above. So, since all of us have to experience adversity in life, it's that much more important to develop these strategies and to have the right attitudes, because that's what's gonna keep us going in the dark times and maybe even enable us to find the silver lining in the cloud, and that's resilience. And resilient people are people who stay happy, productive, creative, connected to others, and who are able to keep doing the things that they love, even despite whatever hardships they face. And resilience, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is being able to be strong, healthy, and successful after something bad happens. So maybe some of you have experienced some difficulties in your life, and maybe this talk might be relevant to you. So I wrote a list here of 12 different things that might help you in bouncing back to your best life when you have experienced any kind of hardship, heartbreak, adversity. So I'm gonna read the list because my brain was not memorizing anything this weekend. 
So the first on the list is to avoid victim mentality. So instead of asking yourself, why is this happening to me, you might want to ask yourself if there's anything that you did that might have contributed to some of your hardships or difficulties, or if there's something that you failed to do. And that way, you'll be able to come to some better choices moving forward. So that's the first one is let go of victim mentality. You can write these down if you feel like it, or put them on your phone, I don't mind. The second on the list is to stop blaming other people. I think we talked about that earlier, right? And because when we blame other people for our difficulties, we give away the power to change things for the better. And the more responsibility we take, the less helpless we feel, and the more confidence we have in confronting our challenges. So number two, stop blaming other people. The third on the list of, of becoming more resilient is learn how to let go. So, you know, we always want to try to control things, but that's impossible. Instead of trying to, in to control things, we, we, we really need to face the way things are in the moment. So we can give up our ideas of how things should be and accept the way they actually are. That way we'll feel less overwhelmed and it will be easier to focus on finding solutions to our problems. So, number three, learn to let go. Number four is to do what's possible when it's possible. So sometimes the troubles we're facing are really, really awful. You know, death of a loved one, that's a big one. But there are a lot of different things. Divorce, disappointment, failure, bankruptcy. Many things can really hit us so hard that we feel like we want to give up. And that's understandable. But if we can just think of one subtle shift that we can make, even just a change in attitude, we can go from feeling completely despondent to motivated to keep going forward. So the next on that list, number four, is do what is possible when it's possible. Not perfection, just what you can. The fifth thing on the list is to lean on our loved ones. Love is absolutely essential when we're going through a hard time, and I certainly have leaned on my loved ones a lot, especially when one of my loved ones was lost. The rest of us came together and we really supported each other. It was wonderful, it was amazing. So when we're facing a crisis, our loved ones give us love, of course, comfort, support, advice, and practical assistance that's absolutely invaluable. Do not isolate yourself when you're going through a hard time. Reach out and ask people to help. You're actually giving them a gift because the opportunity to help you is a wonderful gift you give them because they feel good to be able to offer you something in a hard time. They can't change the situation for you, but when they give you love from their heart and support, they feel fulfilled and enriched as well. And you connect more as well, so there's a little silver lining in the cloud from that kind of experience. So lean on loved ones, number five. The sixth, feel the burn. I love to exercise, and when I exercise, everything is better. So exercise, one of the things it does is it flushes out the stress hormones, like cortisol. So when all that stress is built up in your body, you exercise and you sweat, you literally sweat it out. You sweat out the stress, you sweat out the cortisol. And it leaves us physically more able to face our problems. And exercise also helps us emotionally because it releases the feel-good hormones in our body called endorphins and enkephalins, and that's our natural high. Those are actual hormones that are running through our system when we exercise. When we run, the endorphins run. And also, exercise helps us emotionally by letting us release pent-up anger, frustration, anxiety, hurt, pain, fear. All the negative emotions get released when we move. So the number six is feel the burn. Number seven, cry it out. Crying is really, really important for our physical and emotional well-being. It flushes out toxins through our tears. There's like, I don't know, dozens of different substances in our tears. And when we cry, we actually are cleaning ourselves physically. We're also cleansing ourselves emotionally. And crying helps us face and accept our losses and let go of our hurt and pain. So the seventh on the list, cry it out. Never be afraid to cry. And that goes for men, women, everybody. The eighth is to take care of ourselves. So that leads back to me and my really difficult weekend and not being able to remember my, my lines. And it's like, okay, I give up. I'm taking my paper. I'm reading my talk. We're not perfect. We all go through difficult times. So be gentle with yourself. Hardship is incredibly stressful. And we really need to focus on good self-care, including getting enough sleep, eating right, getting a massage, and just going easy on ourselves. The thing about going through adversity is it's not the way you expect it to be. It's not just feeling sad. When difficult things happen, you're not just sad, you're not just stressed. You're distracted, your memory goes, your concentration goes, you can become irritable, you can have difficulties with sleep. All sorts of different things can happen. So you have to be compassionate with yourself, otherwise you just make it harder on yourself. That's eight, take care of yourself. 
Nine, be creative. Creativity is incredibly empowering and it counters the helplessness you feel when you're going through a hard time. And pain is very isolating, so when you create, you feel more engaged in life. So never, never stop creating, never stop being creative, even if it's creative problem solving. Creativity really brings out the best in you and, and changes how you feel about everything. The tenth, laughter. It seems counterintuitive. I mean, how do we laugh in the middle of a tragedy? But we need it. Humor is good for mind, body, and spirit. It builds optimism and gives us perspective, momentarily injecting a little bit of light into the middle of the darkness. I remember going to a funeral years ago of a very close family member and it was really horrible and I was walking with a number of relatives and we all started cracking jokes. It was a spontaneous eruption of humor and we're thinking, are we crazy? Are we morbid? But we so needed some relief and some respite from the nightmare of this loss and it, it actually sort of reset our, our mental and emotional computers and made us able to cope with the rest of the process. So don't be afraid to laugh even in the hard times. When my cousin was dying, the day we brought her into the hospital to, to switch into hospice care, the hospice doctor came and he kept cracking jokes with her. This is the hospice doctor, the director of hospice. So if he can crack jokes with a person he's putting into hospice, I think we're all allowed to laugh in the hard times. Okay, the eleventh, so laughter, very important. The eleventh, meditate. Spirituality, meditation, and prayer are very calming and centering, and they help us recover our strength and our purpose when we feel lost, vulnerable, and alone during difficult times. Take some time, tune in, breathe, plant your feet, ground, because when you're going through hard times, you sort of can leave your body, you can dissociate, you can, one time, I had a really bad, difficult time. A friend of mine was, was very sick, he was in his 30s, and I made my lunch, I fixed up my whole lunch, I made my breakfast, I left the breakfast fixings, the lunch fixings, and my lunch on the counter, left for work, and then left my car, double parked, locked, and running on Young Street. So, <laughs> that was a few years ago, but it's a lesson in how, how dissociated we can be under stress. So when you are feeling stressed, take time to come back to yourself. If you're spiritual, you can pray, meditate, contemplate, whatever works for you. So tune in. And then the 12th is to try to turn the lemons into lemonade. I just did a blog about Beyonce's album, Lemonade. So <laughs> lemonade's been on my mind. But really, you know, she didn't coin the phrase. Or her, or her grandma, speaking of grandparents this week, uh, this, this evening. So, it might not feel possible while you're in the middle of your crisis, but every single um, difficult time can become an opportunity for personal growth and, and development. So never miss that opportunity, because it's, it's somewhere in there. So instead of feeling oppressed by our circumstances, we can always use the difficulties in our life to evolve as human beings. When we transform the yucky stuff in life into fertilizer for our personal growth, we can become more thoughtful, more compassionate, more loving, and more wise. So sometimes I'm grateful for all the difficult times I've faced because I think it's made me a better human being. And I don't know, if, if life had been so easy, I might be very spoiled and selfish and flippant. But I don't think you can stay a spoiled brat when you know life kicks you in the teeth, especially if you use some of these reminders. So regardless of what we're going through, everybody here and everybody out there can become more resilient. Now resilience won't prevent the bad times and it won't take away our pain, but it will enable all of us to weave our hurts and losses into the rich fabric of a much more meaningful and, and beautiful existence. So my call to action for you all this evening is to think about how you cope with adversity. And how you might want to make use of some of the points I've mentioned tonight, any or all of them. Because when it happens to you, and, and eventually it's going to happen to all of us, hopefully when adversity strikes, you can use some of these pointers and bounce back to your best life. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, let's take questions from the audience. Who has the first question? All right, go ahead. I think some of your tips are, are easier said than done. Uh, the first one that comes to mind would be turning lemon into a lemonade. Can you have yeah. an example of how you did that or how one of your clients did that? Yeah, for sure. Like I said, when you're in the middle of the yuck, um, it's really not easy to. Uh, 
to feel that way. But um, okay, so when I got divorced, it sucked. It really sucked. And I don't know if any of you in the room has been divorced. Not the fun time in your life. Okay, so I felt really crappy. Really like, this wasn't what I wanted. Not happy person. And I thought, I need to do something to feel better. I really need to do something to feel better. So I wrote my first book. And I got it published by a real publisher. And in my acknowledgments in the book, I thank my ex-husband. And I say, um, he, was, he spoke Spanish, so I say to him, La limonata está muy rica. <laughs> Which means, in English, the lemonade is really delicious. So that's one example of how I turn lemonade, lemons into lemonade. And what I do, what I always do when, when life kicks me in the teeth, is I get creative and I, I embark on a really huge creative pro, pro, um, project. I've actually just written a blog. If you go to my website, it's marciasorotamd.com. It's going to come out um, this week, and it's also going to be on my newsletter, which you can sign up to if you go on my, my website. It's a monthly free wellness, mental wellness, emotional, spiritual wellness newsletter. And it's a blog on how to become enormously creative and productive. So when I'm going through a really hard time, I, I bite off more than I can chew. I bite off a ridiculously impossible creative project. And because I'm feeling so crappy, I'm really motivated to succeed. So that's, that's my way of doing it. Yes? So you're talking a lot about creativity. So yes. What's the most creative project Living my life. <laughs> Sorry? Living it to the fullest? To the fullest I can, for sure, yeah. Let me ask a question. Yeah. I'll ask a question. Okay. Um, who are your typical clients? Well, I have, I have different kind of clients because I'm a psychiatrist, so I do psychotherapy, and that's a lot of people who have post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, low self-esteem, anxiety, depression, bipolar. But for coaching purposes, and I also do private coaching, it's people who are blocked in their creativity, people who want to make the most of their relationships, people who want to take their career to the next level, and, and really a lot of my work is about being your best self, living your best life. And the last question then is, what was your first job and how did you get to psychiatry? <laughs> my first job, interestingly, was being the cleaner in the labor and delivery room uh, of the, um, one of the hospitals in Montreal where I grew up. And the first day I walked in there, a woman had just given birth and I walked in and she parted her legs. Uh, close your ears, any of you who don't want to hear this. And some blood came out. And I said, I was 17, I said, I didn't know there would be blood. So that was my first job. And how did I become a psychiatrist? Well, that's a longer story. <laughs> Fair enough. Any other, last, any other final questions? OK, follow-up question. Okay. Well, no, I'm not follow-up. Totally right? Yes. I've heard a lot of people over the years say, you know, I'm not the creative type. I think everybody's capable of being creative. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. Exercise or something to get them going. Has there been some sort of tool or exercise that you use as your bias to really back up get them going on a creative tangent? Well, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question because I was just talking to somebody today about how people say, you know, I'm not creative, I'm not artistic, I can't draw a straight line, I can never be creative. And the truth is, everyone is creative. If, when, when everyone was a child, we, we drew pictures, right? We all scribbled, we wrote stories, we wrote poems. Everybody is creative, and then something happens to you in life that shuts it down. So it's, there's a lot of things that you can do to come back to that place of, of innocence. And, and actually, the, the blog that I just wrote, which is how to maximize your productivity and creativity, I have like 15 points about how to really explode and become enormously creative and productive. So uh, go to my website, marciasorotamd.com, sign up for my newsletter, and you, you can uh, read all those points. They're, they're going to be very interesting, I think, for you. Great. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.